No my Heidi Mai on this cold winter's day. Welcome back to video number 36. So we are approaching 40, guys. It's going well. Now, I know there's a heap of guys out there that still haven't done um, a video yet or are taking their time or on the fence thinking about it. That's all good. Plenty of time still. Just uh, take your time. But I can tell you that the rest of your year group, the guys are really enjoying just hearing from you and, and touching base with you again um, after all of these years. Now, our next interviewee and, and fellow classmate is a day boy. He came to us from Lower Hutt. Now, he had a large family presence at Streamed, um, to say the least. His uh, brothers you will know, and, and some of them I have moved on to um, television fame and, and you'll see their familiar faces with um, Jeremy and Justin and, and Lawrence. I had um, our interviewee, your classmate is the youngest of the brothers and I um, also had the pleasure of serving with his mum, uh, Nevi on the Board of Trustees uh, while, oh. while, while we were at um, Silverstream and she's a lovely lady. Um, guys, let's get into it. Let's reintroduce ourselves to a great fellow Time to say hi to James Curry. Kia ora, James. Hey, kia ora. Huge. Good to see you again. Great to see you after all this time. How are you? You're looking good. Thanks, mate. Yeah, I've been good. Uh, just enjoying this really crap weather. Mate, we got past the halfway point of winter and now it's just turned to shit. So, uh, <laughs> just enjoying, uh, enjoying the cold. Now, I must say straight off the bat, you're still sporting a decent um, bit of hair on top of that head, mate. It's looking good. <laughs> looks, like, looks like you can bring back the flat top. Hey, that's pretty funny. Uh, I think there was a comment by one of the boys about how many flat tops Joe DeVitti did. And a uh, comment that I sent back to him was, I wonder if the flat top's going to come back like the mullet did. <laughs> yeah, not sure about that. Not sure about that. I nah, that. nah, indeed. Look, wonderful of you to join us. Um, we all have fond memories of you, and and just cool for you to tell your story. Take us back. So, when you first joined at Stream, of course, um, tell us a little bit about where you came from. Um, obviously, you had brothers ahead of you, and how many years did you end up doing at Stream? Take us back. Uh, so initially I wasn't really going to be able to make it into stream because uh, I think my reading ability was pretty poor and uh, we had a meeting with Father Dooley and um, he just did a quick comprehension test and it was pretty uh, pretty shit but um, he you know, let me in and then it was just all from there and obviously the boys have made such an impression on uh, self sort of staff and a lot of the priests that... Uh, we're kind of sick of dealing with them. So I was uh, battling against that as well. Um, but yeah, no, it was really good. Um, really enjoyed it. Well, some of the fonder memories, I, fondest memories I have of you, James, is you were always a quiet achiever. Big smile on your face, off the radar kind of guy. And I can just tell when we had a chat offline before, you're still the same. And um, I, I admire that style. You just sort of go about your business. Um, but yeah, there, there were definitely some memories of me. And then later on, your, your sporting abilities too, James. You were a good rugby player. Did you end up playing any rugby out of school? Uh, I did play with some of the guys. Um, I think uh, we were in, I think Lee Smith took uh, us. There was a couple of us that played for Huddle Boys Maris. Obviously, when you finish up from first to team, yeah, everyone's going back to the homes that they came from. We all split up, go to different unions, or if you don't go to uni. And then um, a couple of us ended up at Huddle Boys, and I think they were just coming out of the amalgamation between Marist and um, Huddle Boys, so it was a new thing. Uh, played there, some uh, really good players. Um, didn't really take it seriously after first the team, and then you know how it goes. Uh, played under the 19s um, for Wellington. Uh, got told to show up to Colts training, but uh, had other ideas, so <laughs> didn't show up for that. Um, yeah, but yeah, definitely enjoyed my rugby, it was really cool. I only wish I continued, you know, just like everyone else is saying, you know, if you took it more seriously in hindsight, but hey, that's just the way it goes. Yep, that's the way it goes. Tell us, what did you do your first year immediately out of stream? Where did, where did you, what journey did you take? Well, just like everyone else, I guess, in the class, uh, we all had aspirations of going to uni. 
So I ended up uh, going to Zach. I got accepted into Otago, but um, I didn't didn't quite make it down there. I sort of stayed a bit closer to home. Uh, so I uh, ended up doing a Bachelor of Science um, in Physiology. So I did that. And then I uh, wanted to move on to more commerce, but then a change in psychology. So I think I got to the stage where I did a diploma. I've still got one paper to do. I just haven't gone around to doing it. But uh, maybe this year, who knows? Uh, yeah, and just finish up with those calls. Uh, I'll probably never look back. <laughs> what an amazing story from someone that was initially maybe looking at um, um, some academic um, challenges coming into stream to someone that's achieved very well academically um, post um, college. Well done, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's uh, awesome. What? Tell us about your occupation. So I believe you're in your workplace now. What What do you do for work and what have you done uh, primarily all these years? Uh, all these years. So I uh, got out of uni. I've always worked closely in telecommunications and telecom, even when I was studying for my degree. Uh, and then when I graduated, uh, I think, yeah, when I graduated, um, I ended up working at uh, for Shell Oil. Uh, so I was just working in the call centre and worked my way up as a data analyst. So I was doing that for a little while. And then went up to Canada. I met a girl, um, stayed there for about four years and didn't want to work in the office. So did all sorts of jobs um, outside, more labouring. Uh, so I worked on a crab boat uh, for a good year. Um, one of these seasons over there, that was awesome. Well, hold up, hold up. You're like talking about one of, <laughs> what, one of these programs we see on Discovery? No, mate, no, small fry. But yeah, honestly, the edge on a fishing boat, if you've ever worked on one, can be pretty full on. You know, your, your life can be in danger pretty quickly. If your leg gets wrapped around the rope, you can be overboard. And there's only two of you on there. And what the captain was just a, he was a real big man. He was a complete ass. But you see it through, you grit it out, you have some fun, enjoy being on the water, and you know, you get better at it. Yes, okay. Wow, that's a really, a really interesting um, story. Now, you, so you went to Canada for a gal. Are we still with the Canadian gal? Obviously not. <laughs> 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 no, no, that didn't work out. It was, uh, oh, how do you say? That was the spirit of the moment thing, and um, yeah, it didn't work out. But uh, Canada is pretty awesome. Like going over there. I thought we, we liked the parties, but mate, they put us to shame. Is that right? Yeah. What, now, um, I've never been to Canada, but uh, certainly looking-wise, um, geographically, is it similar to New Zealand? I think it's beautiful. It really is. Um, I like the people. The people are really cool. But it's got a feel of America. It just looks all, you know, what you see on TV, you must see the same homes. I guess the word suburbia is definitely a big thing over there and all the large uh, stores. But getting out of the country is amazing. But you know, when you if you like going camping, you want those in the back of your mind. You're thinking, is it going to be a cougar, a bear, or something that's going to bloody kill you? So you've got to have your wits about yeah, and just be sensible. Oh uh, yeah, that was pretty. Uh, you know, you're not really totally relaxed when you're going camping over there. But. Oh wow, that's so neat. So look, uh, I'm do, I'm not sure, but do you have any um, children? Um, have you been married, or are you, are you still, still a single uh, uh, eligible bachelor? <laughs> No, no, no. I've got a girlfriend of, I think we've been together for nine years. She has three kids. I think uh, Jamie and Will are quite familiar with her. She used to chef for them up in uh, Kandala. So that's oh, cool. Uh, she's pretty cool. She keeps me grounded. Um, a very sensible woman. Excellent. And she puts up with my shit. You know how all the girls do. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what, mate? So, um, no, she's a really good woman. I uh, have my back. And uh, yeah, that's all I can ask for. Oh, look, I love I love what you just said. She's got your back, and that is all we can ask for. So, um, well said. Now, look, a little bit of a sad one. This one, um, look, I know your dad suddenly passed away in recent yeah. years, um, gained some publicity. I, I, I was um, really shocked, and I felt for you and your whanau, uh in the circus in the circumstances. So, um, how is your family um, doing? And, and and of course, how how are your brothers? I, I see them uh, popping up on adverts every now and then, and, and is everyone doing well? 
Yeah, everyone's doing well. Uh, thank you very much for condolences with Dad. Um, a lot of the boys actually reached out, you know, from stream. It's amazing uh, the passion that comes out from people, from relationships and friendships that you've had from such a long time ago. Um, yeah, that was a shock. Uh, I, I guess it's a rite of passage that we all go through, unfortunately, but um, our one came a lot quicker than what we thought it would. So it was a shock, and then dealing with media and uh, dealing with all sorts of facets of ACC and lawyers and police um, was quite the experience. But then having your own time to grieve and, and make sense of it. So happy to say we've all moved on from it. You know, you you know you heal, and time's a great healer. I've seen on Facebook, some guys have experienced the death of the parents, and you know just know that your dad's in a better place. And then one day, you know, we are going to see each other again. Um, as for my brothers, you know, they're up to their normal bloody television styles. You know, you're watching TV one day, they never tell you, and then you just see them on TV, you know, it's like a double take. Uh, so Justin does a lot of their, uh, TV work, and uh, Jeremy, he does a lot of uh, voiceovers. Um, I don't know which ones they do. I find out when you find out, so um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, Still got a bit of kick out of it, thing on TV. So, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yes, the why, and I'm sure the rest of the guys too when, when they see them, but I'm really glad that um, you guys are in some happier times now because you are a lovely family, a lovely lower heart family that, yeah. that a lot of people know, and I know that, you know, uh, genuinely wish you um, all the best. Now, where's home for you now? Where are you living? Uh, so I've uh, gone back and uh, moved home and looked after it because uh, everyone's moved away. So currently doing a lot of renovations on it. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Basically, uh, we had a couple of tenants in there that just went great and they did a bit of damage, but then there was a lot of uh, infrastructure work that needed to be fixed. And I guess the projects uh, that you work on and, you know, it's a slow process, but, you know, yeah. well, probably it more safer to live in. Yeah, 100%. Bravo to you. you know, it's always a um, special thing when you've got to look after that family home with others moving away. So good on you, man. That's that's wonderful to hear. Now, the next question, we've only got a couple left, mate, is um, uh, quite a big one. It's, it's a certain memory that you might have that you sort of held or carried for all these years that it's just never escaped you that comes back to you. Have you got a particular time, memory, teacher, or something that you want to share with the rest of the guys that sort of, you know, that you've got? I think um, I've got just like snippets of, it's like a collage of different uh, memories and they've been happy memories and some of the memories I have of uh, Silverstrom is some of the best you know times that I've experienced and um, very fondly. Uh, just some little snippets I always think about and that's a shout out to you Andy Lowe. Uh, I've never actually managed to run up uh, Blue Mountain, never had the lung capacity for it, but when I heard you did it in your slippers, <laughs> I don't know if anyone knew that. Yeah, they told me you did in your slippers. I always remember that. Uh, someone put a photo of a car and also a tree on number one field, and that was our year, and I remember that was one of the last days that we did. I remember that car driving around on number one, and uh, I think David Lee was very impressed. There were a couple of prefects in there seeing the wrong expectations. Um, yeah. uh, sticky... Sticky was a good teacher. I mean, even there, as poncy as what he was, he gave me an enthusiasm, enthusiasm for science. It's just teachers just showing an interest and being there support. And uh, just like the rest of us, Brother B, he played an important part. Um, I'd like to qualify that I was a day boy, but then I was boarding in the last year. I know it doesn't qualify because you guys did all the hard yards. Uh, but yeah, boarding uh, just gave me more time to... Uh, um, do more things, but then also have those friendships and relationships with. Uh, just, I'll just stop you there, because because I don't actually remember that. So, you actually boarded in your final year. I had to. Um, I was involved in so much. I had no time and travel time to go home. It's just I couldn't squeeze it all in. So, yeah, it just made sense to board. I think um, Brother Bede and the rest of them stepped in a little bit to make uh, it more financially viable for me to attend. I loved it, mate. Absolutely. Awesome. And, and and as he did for um, a lot of us too, you know, and, and they were wonderful times. So did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy the food? Fuck yeah, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I remember as a day boy standing out there not having any lunch and then seeing you guys line up and all you could smell the food and uh, some of the guys on the borders complained about the food. But man, when we got in there, shit. 
special first to say, and I think we remember we always had lunch in there before we had it. I think I just had too much, mate. Half the time you're going to you're feeling like you shit your pants, right? But, uh, yeah, no, it was good fun. Oh, that's brilliant. And again, brilliant, brilliant memories. Yeah, do you keep in touch with anyone from our year group? Yeah, it's Greg. Uh, it's Greg. Yeah, definitely. I keep in contact with him. I mean, uh, he's a busy man. We're all busy, but, you know, he's still fine time. Um, just like connecting with you. It's just like I just saw you the other day. Um, and same as true. Hear a lot of stories of people bumping into each other. It's just like, um, you know, we never left. Yeah. A bit of water under the bridge, as you're saying, but you have a bit of catch up, but you know, you're still, still in the mind. Most definitely. Yeah. And it's so cool that you and Mookie have remained close. You were close at school. Um, you, you, yeah. you, you're you close in life now. You know, I think that's uh, wonderful. Now, life's busy. What's the chances of getting along to this um, foundation dinner? Mate, I'm not going to make any promises. Uh, I think my excuse was I was going to babysit Gabriel, which is um, Greg's son. <laughs> that holds up. I don't know, mate. If it happens, it happens. But, um, Nothing wrong yeah. with that. I mean, it'll be, good. it'll be good to be there and see everyone and uh, hear from everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, nothing wrong with nothing wrong with that, mate. We'll um, you know, we'll we'll just stand by and and and, uh, and if it happens, and um, I put this out to you, mate. If we can help you get there, please let us know because we'd love to see you. Uh, you know, yeah, you're, part, cool. you're you're part of us, and um, you know, and we we could make that happen. Well, my friend, we'll come to the end. I just want to say thanks, heaps, bro, for giving us your time today. I know the guys are going to be really wrapped to see and hear from you. It's great to um, have another four year day boy. No, is it four year day boy, one year border on the on, right. on board um, to, and to say good day and, and, and kia ora. Have you got a special message for the guys that are about to watch this? Yeah, I just, um, I mean, I always think of my school years and I remember all the faces, uh, even when we, you know, have a look and I still remember you, uh, absolutely. And uh, uh, definitely some fun times and um, memories I'll cherish for the rest of my life. So we don't see each other. Uh, we're a big reunion, because this is what it is. And now that I'm thinking of you guys and um, hope to catch up with you one day soon. Well, there you have it, fellow classmates. A great interview with a fellow I reckon still looks exactly the same, like he just walked into stream. But it's wonderful <laughs> to catch up with the one and only James Curry. Bro, thanks for your time. Take good care. Nice. Thanks, huge. See you later, boys.